Hey folks, Wolf here. No, that's not a dried up leaf. It's the ghost mantis. It's a praying mantis that lives in a wide range across the African continent, although these little guys were bred in the United States. So let's start building their new home. This is the Reptazoo vivarium measuring 12 by 12 by 18 inches. Although mine arrived with two broken panes, they will not harm the little guys while the new ones come in. Now Exoterra has a similar size vivarium, so I purchased their rock background for this build. It's not too bad of a piece at all. Fortunately, it's a little tight, so some trimming must be done. It's made of styrofoam, so a box knife should do the trick. I'm cutting an extra two inches from the bottom so that the false bottom and substrate doesn't cover much of the background, thus keeping the water down at the bottom where it's supposed to be. If you notice, the back has two channels. Although it would be in the back, I don't want the little guys to be able to drop down into the channel to get lost in the back. So I'm going to add a small piece of styrofoam along the top edge. I must admit I tried to glue it in place and duh, the glue ate up the styrofoam. My bad. After the background is in place, time to move to the flooring. Anything placed in your ecosystem should be at least rinsed and cleaned prior to placing inside. Now there are plenty of supplies out there, but my preference is Josh's Frogs. Matter of fact, I will be using a lot of their products for this build. Now unfortunately they are not a sponsor, they just have quality stuff. First thing you want to do is lay down a false bottom. I prefer the clay ball bottom over the gravel. Less dirt, quicker rinse, and less maintenance. I'm all about easy, so long as it works and it looks good. Next item to go in is the substrate barrier. It is like the landscaping weed block, but is made of fiber and not plastic. Some people use mesh or screening. I prefer the fiber barrier. Again, less maintenance and will keep all the finer substrate particles from falling into the false bottom. Well, looks like Miss Callie approved so far. Next, we will prepare the substrate. I'm using ZooMed Echo Earth, a compressed coconut fiber expandable substrate that could be safely composted or recycled. It's perfect for all types of reptiles, amphibians, small animals, or insects. It naturally absorbs and breaks down odor and waste products. Just pour in some water and watch it start expanding. I will first line the edges with the substrate so the barrier doesn't move. Then fill in the bottom. Again, about an inch or inch and a half. If you slope the bottom up towards the back, making sure the background is covered, it will add a little more depth to your vivarium. Most mantis are almost entirely arboreal, meaning they sit in trees and bushes rather than the ground. So you're going to need things for them to climb and perch on. I picked up two large pieces of California driftwood. It's the same driftwood that is used in a fish aquarium. These pieces were boiled for 20 minutes each and rinsed and dried afterwards. Being that it's not going to be submerged in water, this lesser time for sanitizing will do. So now, let's prep the driftwood with a little floral decor. I'm using a common Tillandsia or air plant. They do not require to be planted fully in soil or substrate, and pretty much do not grow fast at all. Find your placement and put some super glue in a spot you want. Super glue is safe for both fish and these little guys. I use zip ties to hold everything in place until dried. Before the glue dries, apply some leftover substrate over the glue. This will help in covering the glue while also having a place to water, as these plants do need some water. Everything used will be linked below. Again, there's no sponsors for this, as it's my first video, in this category anyway. Once this has been completed to your liking, next is the placement of your plants. I was able to get a small variety of tropical plants. Again, Josh's Frog sells bundles based on the size of your aquarium, terrarium, or vivarium, and all the plants are pet friendly. Now, by no means am I a plant expert, or will I in no way attempt to say their scientific names at this point. I just know I wanted taller plants in the background, like ferns and vining plants, and wanted more ground and bush plants up front along with a patch or two of moss, which will be added a little later. To prep the plants for planting, remove the pots and gently rake the soil from the roots. After the dirt has been cleared away, gently rinse the roots in warm water and you're ready for planting. I have not added this part in the video as I'm trying to make these videos somewhat compact. I invested into some aquascaping tools to make things a little easier. They are great for aquariums, terrariums, and vivariums. It's a basic tool set comprised of two long tweezers, straight and curved, a pair of trimming scissors, and a spatula to help with moving things around and leveling things off. 
I will start planning from the back and work my way to the front. I'm using the adage that less is more, so I'm not going to fill up the whole floor with a bunch of plants and watching them fight to survive. Again, it should look good without all the maintenance. Remember, after your plants are in place, mist them in a substrate. Once everything is planted, add some leaf litter to the bottom. Leaf litter acts on two fronts, providing nutrients back into the substrate as they decay, as well as providing hiding spots and food for your cleanup crew. A few pieces of gravel or rock are also good things to place throughout the bottom. What? what what's a cleanup crew? There are small critters placed inside to provide life cleaning and maintenance in your ecosystem. The most common use are isopods and springtails. They are soft body micro insects that feed on decomposing leaf litter, animal feces, and dead plant material, making them an essential element for the overall health of your ecosystem. I'll be adding those a little later once the plants have taken root, so to speak. I have also added a small hygrometer, which measures the humidity and temperature inside the vivarium. That way I can monitor both every day to keep the environment safe and beneficial to both the guys and the plants. With the little fellows in place, here's what the finished aquarium looks like. I hope you enjoyed this video and has been helpful. I will update in a few weeks. Again, apologize for the quality. As with my first little ecosystem, it's all a learning experience. Stay safe.